All right, all right. Well, good. It's great seeing so many people that are excited about learning this particular topic, which is how to recruit in the cold market. You know what that means? It means not warm market. What is warm market? Friends, family, rel you know, neighbors, people you know. So you got people you know, you got people you don't know. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how to recruit people you don't know. For those of you that I've never met before, uh, my name is Brian Carruthers. I'm in my, I usually say my home office, but I'm actually in my kitchen in my home here in Leesburg, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. I figured I'd change up the scenery and I'd do it here in the kitchen. And um, because look, we're going to be chefing some things together. We're going to be cooking some things up. Uh, I promise you, you're going to hear some ideas that you've already heard before, but maybe it just needed to hear it one more time. And there's going to be some other things that maybe you really have not thought of it in this uh, from from this perspective before. But as a backdrop, okay, I'm not. I don't want to to say these things to 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 like brag um, because that's not what that's about. But I do want to paint a picture of why I feel uh, I can share with you something of value tonight. Uh, I think that uh, you can teach people how to do something that you've done before. And so for my first 10 years in my network marketing career with my current company, from 1998 to 2008, I recruited 10 people a month, 10 people a month. And so, um, and I did, and, and for a little while in my recent years with uh, my family, with two young kids and everything that's going on and my investments and everything else, I have not been as focused on recruiting personally. And so I was probably recruiting three, four people a month. Uh, in January, in February, and in March, these last three months, I've recruited 33 people. So I am on it again, okay? I, once you know the formula, you just know it. Now, Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn used to teach so many philosophical, um, you know, you know he, he used to give out not just gold nuggets, but boulders. One of the things I heard him say one time was, go out and make a million dollars, but not for the money. Go make a million for the person you had to become to make the million. In order for your income to grow, you need to grow. And I took that seriously. And I wanted to get really good. I wanted to grow myself so that my income would catch up with me. So tonight, this skill, uh, you can apply it in your network marketing business. I see uh, somebody on here, Jose, uh, from EXP Realty. I mean, you can use this in any business that you're looking to recruit people into. You could have a real estate brokerage, a mortgage company, a network marketing company. It doesn't matter. If you're looking to find and hire or find and recruit good people, um, there are some baseline foundational stuff I'm going to teach you tonight and then some techniques and some different methods. Okay, let me start off by Here's the fundamentals. Um, first, you have to find the person. So where will you find the people? Online and offline. It's not or, it's and. Find people online. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And find people offline means out and about. Like you're in a home-based business, but not a home-bound business. So get out of your house. Go to where the people are. And what do you do when you find people? Human beings, like you walk up and you establish rapport. Establish rapport. When you establish rapport, you're, you're starting the, uh, the basis of building a new friendship. So instead of going out and trying to find new recruits, why don't you go out and try to find new friends? Going out into the world or going out onto the internet. Go find new friends. Smile, introduce yourself, get to know them. Be interested, not just trying to be interesting. If you're taking notes, write that down. Be interested and not just try to be Mr. or Miss Interesting. I know we always want to impress people. Listen to me. Let me beat my chest. Here's why you need to listen to me. And I'm going to show you how to make money. How about being interested in them? When you're, interest, when you're interested in somebody else, you can find out about what they like in their life. And you can find out what are the pain points in their life. And if you know what they like and you know what they don't like, you can show them an opportunity where they can get more of what they like and then get rid of the stuff they don't like. 
They might like time with their kids. They might like travel. But that has nothing to do with their job. So with their job, they might like interacting with people, but they might not like the long hours or the capped pay. So what if you can show them a way where they can interact with a lot of great people, but they have no cap on their income and they can set their own hours with complete flexibility? Would you be interested in an opportunity like that? Sure, they'll say, yes, I'm interested because you are interested enough to find out what is important to them. So number one, establish rapport, build a new friendship. Number two, peak interest. P-I-Q-U-E, peak their interest. Now, once I've established some rapport with someone, I will peak their interest with a standard opening line that I rattle off that does not sound canned and scripted. It sounds something like, um, look at somebody, uh, I see Joe Lovejoy. I'll say, so Joe, do you keep your income options open to side projects if the money's exciting enough? That's the, that's the language. So I'm, I'm talking to Joe, we're talking about golf, we're talking about the weather, whatever, and we talk about what he does. And, and I'd say, hey, Joe, let me ask you a question, man. I know it's kind of out of left field, but do you keep your income options open to side projects if the money's exciting enough? Now, he might not normally be open to side projects. He's already too busy for something else. But when he hears the, the term, if the money is exciting enough, he might already make a quarter million a year. So, but if he hears if the money is exciting enough, he might be thinking, all right, well, shit, if, if, if it's 500 grand a year in additional income, that's exciting enough for me to stop and listen to what you have to say. So that's my opening line. Now, you can go to my briancrothers.com and go to my free downloads section and my opening lines document that has like 10 or 15 of the most effective opening lines that I've ever used or I've ever heard of people using, it's all on that document. You can go print it out, okay? So once you pique their interest, the next step is a presentation. Now, if you're trying to sell your product, present it. Go be a big boy, big girl, go present it. You don't need anybody to present it. Go present your product. But when it comes to opportunity, duplication matters. So don't just uh, be the presenter all the time. You wanna leverage third-party tools or third-party presenters. Uh, set, have them watch a video, have them listen to somebody else on a Zoom, invite them to an event. So you approach, you establish rapport and build a new friendship. You pique their interest. You get them to see some sort of a presentation, hopefully third party, so that you've edified it and they listen to it with, you know, it's got some credibility with them. And after the, after the presentation, this is key, after the presentation, you edify. And please, I would encourage you in all caps, E-D-I-F-Y, write that down in your notes. Most network marketers are not doing nearly enough of this. Edify, edify, edify. Edification is everything. What, you know, there's different ways to, you know, define the word edify, but in network marketing, it means to speak well of, to give credibility to. So if I'm trying to recruit uh, Jose and, uh, and uh, let's say uh, Alan Heath is my uh, upline expert, I'm going to tell Jose how amazing Mr. Alan Heath is. He's one of the leaders of the company, knows all the facts about the business, knows how the big money's being made. He's a lot of fun. He, he also uh, just really loves to help people. And if I can just get a few minutes of his time so he can chat with you and share with you some, uh, some insights from like behind the curtain, um, that would be super valuable. Hold on, let me see if I can connect you guys. So I would edify a third party after the presentation's done and let Mr. Heath talk to Jose. Mr. or Miss whoever, edification, their last name, Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so, and that edification gives them influence with your prospect. And guess what they're going to do? On that three-way call, they're going to close your prospect. Here is my closing line. Again, I'm I'm gonna look. I'm I'm standing here in my kitchen. Okay, uh, I, I I did not put a, print out a schedule of exactly step by step, word for word, what I'm gonna teach you guys tonight. So I'm just gonna be going with the flow here. So if, I, I might be a little all over the place, but here's my oh, my closing line. When I am the closer, I am the upline expert doing a three way call for somebody in my team. Here's what I would say. So Jose, did you already fill out your application, or is that what you and Brian are doing right now? At the end of that conversation, when the prospect has got their questions answered and they got to make a decision, I would, I ask, so did you already fill out your application or is that what you and so-and-so are doing right now? 
And that's when they say, oh, uh, no, we didn't do it. I guess that was, I guess that's what we're doing now. And I say, okay, fantastic. Well, it only takes a couple quick minutes to do it. So-and-so is going to stay on the line and help you get it done right on the website. And as soon as that happens, we'll get you some getting started info. And now uh, once you've gone through some of that getting started info, we'll circle back around and we'll do a game plan call so we can actually talk strategy. At that point, you're going to tell me, hey, Brian, I want to make about this amount of money per month. I can devote about this amount of time per week. Can you give me a, help me devise a strategy to be able to accomplish that in the next six months? Are you, are, are you excited for that conversation when we get to it just in a in the next in a day or so? All right, fantastic. I'll let you guys get that done. We'll, we'll, we'll look forward to working with you. Take care. By the way, that is the recruiting process. So I wanted to lay that down as a framework for tonight. I also want to give you a, another, um, uh, this is super important. When you're talking to prospects, whether it's a warm market or a cold market prospect, the prospect does not need to believe in what you're sharing with them yet. They don't need to believe in your opportunity. They just need to believe that you believe. They need to believe that you believe. When they, when they know that you believe in what you're talking about, they can feel your conviction. It's coming through in your posture, your music. You just, you believe. Okay, think about this, you guys. If I asked you to promote a movie, it's called the Scientific Express. How effective are you going to be at getting your friends and family to go watch that movie? Not very, not very effective because you don't love the movie. You haven't seen the movie. You don't love it. You don't believe in it. You're not going to get people to go drop $14 a ticket to go see that movie based on the fact that, well, you should go see the movie. It's, uh, I don't know how good it is. I haven't seen it. By the way, I just made it up. That doesn't even exist. But if you went to a movie, you're like, that's the best movie I've seen in five years. I mean, literally, I would go see it again. If you felt that good about a movie, you're going to be super effective at getting everybody you know to go want to go see the movie. Like tomorrow night, Melissa and I, we're going to go on our date night. We usually do it on Fridays. We're going to happen to do it this tomorrow night. And we're going to go to dinner and we're going to go see the new uh, Air, which is the Michael Jordan movie with Nike. I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but if it's good, I'll be telling everybody about it. So anyway, they don't need to believe. They just need to believe that you believe. So now let's talk about some different cold market recruiting strategies. Uh, where can you find people, okay? Um, one of the key ways that I have recruited hundreds of people into this business, hundreds of my recruits came from me buying leads. Some of you are like, oh, really? Some of you guys have an upline leader that has told you don't ever waste time on buying leads and calling them. And they have a reason for that. I don't know what the reason is. Maybe they tried it. Maybe they, maybe they bought a batch of leads or maybe they did it for a few months and never recruited anybody. And like, oh, that doesn't work. Or maybe their uplines, 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 upline had a bad experience with calling leads and they just didn't get anywhere. So then the trickle down effect, like that's like, that's like somebody like your, your uncle's friend's neighbor's coworker got into network marketing, failed and called it a pyramid scheme. So then that has been perpetuated all the way to you four generations away where they're, you, you know, your, your uncle's telling you it's a pyramid scheme just because four people removed said that they thought it was a pyramid scheme. So anybody who says that, that calling leads to recruit people, people that answered an online ad looking for a home-based business opportunity, if they say it doesn't work, they're not speaking from experience or they tried it and didn't learn how to do it effectively and gave up real early. Now, is this for everybody? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe not. But here's the thing. How many of you all, just say me in the chat, if you would love to have more prospects than you know what to do with. That'd be a pretty good problem because most network marketers are like, oh, I, I want to work my business today, but I have nobody to call. I mean, what do I do? I mean, then they just keep on calling the same eight cousins every single freaking week for five years. Like, oh, none of my eight cousins want to join. I guess this business won't work for me. So the key is figure out what your lane is going to be. You know, what, are, what methods are you, going to, are you going to employ in your business and then decide to, to go for it and stick to it? Like, for example, the lead vendor that I've used for years, and I see my good friend, 
who I've known for geez, 15 years or more, I don't know, 20 years. Jason Kraft, I see him on there. He's got the same hairdo as me now. Um, Jason's been the guy, one of the guys that has helped uh, you know, generate these leads. Uh, he actually is the guy behind instantsuccessleads.com. And I, 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 I buy leads and I call the leads and then I follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up on the leads. Now the, li the list of leads will shrink when I talk to somebody and they sound like an absolute imbecile. Like if they just sound ignorant or they just treat me in an ignorant way or whatever, they, they get scratched off. If they sound sharp, if I don't reach them and their voicemail sounds sharp, I'll put a star next to their name. I'll keep on following up with them. If I have a conversation and it's, it was pretty coherent and it was pretty good and I'll, I'll, I'll keep following up. It takes five to seven exposures, five to seven touch points to finally get somebody to sign up in this business. I mean, these people, I'm, I'm interrupting their lives. They got so much stuff going on. I can't get mad if the, the minute I feel like picking up the phone and calling them, I can't get mad that they were not immediately open to looking at the opportunity and making a split second decision to join a, a brand new business and change their life in some way like that. Sometimes it, you have to drip on them with additional information. They need to hear some testimonials. Maybe you do a three-way call or two with some people that they can relate to. So they're like, oh my gosh, if they can do it, I can do it. So we got to we got we to gotta basically just um, hone in our expectations. People quit network marketing. The number one reason why people quit network marketing, unmet expectations. They say, well, um, you know, I'm not looking for a get rich quick scheme, but then they see the comp plan and the opportunity. And when they see the comp plan, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get rich. <laughs> they don't want to get rich quick scheme. But they get in because they see all this money that's on the table. And then 90 days later, or heck, nine days later, they haven't got, they haven't made their first million yet and they quit. Anybody have people like that on your team along the years? So here's the key. Um, the, this first this first avenue of buying leads, okay? I actually have a list of leads I just got today. These are live interviewed leads. Here's what these are all about. It's got their name, email, phone number, state, the agent name. What do you mean the agent name? So these people have answered an ad about making some extra money from home. That's a, that's a good prospect. And they talk to a call center agent who asked them some questions. They said, are you willing to invest at least $100? Every, they're on here. They all say yes. The only way they got on my list of leads that I bought is because they said yes to that question. Um, it says, reason to start a home business. Some say other, some say earn extra money. Some say be your own boss. And then one says flexible schedule. And then the next one says home base, home business experience. Yes or no. I got a bunch of yeses and a bunch of no's. I'll pop, pop up a half and half. And that says make next 60 days. And it's got dollar amounts. A lot of these say a thousand, 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 five hundred, five hundred, thousand, 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 five hundred, five, anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars they'd like to make in the next 60 days. See now, and it says best time to call, which by the way, I never pay attention to that. I call when it's, when it's convenient for me, okay? If they say it's best time to call them in the evening, I try them in the afternoon, I don't reach them. That was my choice. I tried to call them when it was best for me. I, I probably need to plan a time to call them in the evening, like they said. But so calling these leads, if I get a list of, of 25 leads and I spend, I don't know, two, three bucks a lead, whatever, let's, let's say it's $3 a lead. If I spent $75 to get 25 leads, whatever the price is. And by the way, there's a BOGO, buy one, get one free. Um, and uh, Jason, if you wouldn't mind putting that in the chat, I think it's uh, build the number two win, but you can drop that in the chat for everybody. That'd be awesome. Build the number two win. That's your discount code. But for every live interviewed lead that you buy tonight, you'll get an extra one free. So if the cost, I don't know, this is round the cost off at four bucks, you're basically getting a $2 a piece because you're getting one, a free one for every one you buy. How killer is that? So um, that's on instantsuccessleads.net, by the way. Um, drop that in the chat, somebody, if you will. So when I call through these leads, here's, here's the power for anybody who's a naysayer about leads. Yeah, and by, yes, they're going to be some knuckleheads. They're going to be some people that you're like, really? I don't think this person can walk and chew gum at the same time. But who cares? Who cares? Scratch them and move on to the next person. But you know, you're recruiting, whether it's warm market or cold market, 
whether it's calling a lead on the phone or bumping into a stranger at the gas station or seeing somebody at the sideline of your kid's uh, soccer game or getting on Facebook and talking to people online, your posture is super important. When you only have the same five, 10 or 20 prospects, you keep on beating up and you're getting nowhere and frustrated, you're going to come across desperate with every future prospect you come across. But when you can just go online to this website and buy as many leads as you want, you've got unlimited leads. You've got unlimited prospects at your fingertips. You can get as many as you want. The posture now goes from, oh, well, uh, I need you in my business to ch shoulders back, chest out. Like I've got an opportunity. If it's not for you, cool. I'm looking for better people anyway. Like I, I've, got a, I've got a different posture. I'm going to think about maybe letting people into my business versus trying to go out there and desperately get people into my business. Instead of me being a hunter, trying to hunt people down and have them run away from me, I'm going to be a fisherman. I'm going to throw the opportunity out and reel it back in and see who wants to bite because my posture. So leads are not just a way to recruit some people off the list. Leads also make you better, make you more attractive in this people attraction business that we're in with everybody else that you're talking to that are not even leads. Now I'm gonna see if I can get some of you guys to use some bad language. If you guys think that that's pretty badass, write badass in the, in the chat. All right, so I'm gonna let you guys listen to me. I'm gonna let you listen to me make a couple of these calls. Somebody said bad butt, come on. You can say ass, it's like, it's a donkey. That's all it is. All right, so uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, and, and, and here's what's funny. There are people, there's somebody that probably just dropped off right now to make room because there's a, a limit of 500. So there's a lot of people can't get in. So somebody, when they heard me say badass, they dropped off like, oh, I can't stand that kind of language. But then they'll go to non G rated movies and they'll hear that word in a PG movie. Okay. I know that's, you know, society's worse now anyway. But so um, you go to YouTube, to my channel on YouTube, and there's an, an hour long video of me making live dials to these leads. So you can go have at that anytime. Go check it out. You probably have to scroll down a little bit to find where I last posted it, but go find it there and go watch it. I'm going to make a couple dials so you can listen to what I say, how I say it. Um, I've been doing it for so long. I'm not really scripted. Uh, I say kind of the same thing every time. Um, and then, I've, and by the way, after this, I've got, I'm going to teach you how to cold market recruit on Facebook. I'm going to teach you how to do it through people that, are already on your team or who have already quit your team. I'm going to teach you how to get recruits from people who said no to your opportunity already. I'm telling you tonight's going to be value. Okay. So let me make uh, one or two dials here. So you can just kind of see how this works. Let me just go ahead and put my, uh... all right, I'll put on speakerphone. Hopefully uh, you'll, you'll be able to hear me. Uh, I printed this out real small. So hopefully I can see it. Uh... Brian, you guys hear this? I'm going to hang up on that. That was a Google voice. So I'm just going to call another, another straight dial lead here. Let's see here. You guys hear that? Can't hear it. Can't hear it ringing. Hello. Is Benjamin there? Yeah. Is this Benjamin? What's it? Benjamin, are you there? Yeah. Oh, hey, this is Brian Carruthers. We haven't met yet, but you spoke earlier with my assistant, Hazel. Uh-huh. You were asking about our company's work from home program, and you wanted to make a couple thousand dollars extra a month on, uh, on a side project. Yeah. How are you tonight? Hey, what's it? How are you doing? 
Good, good. I'm here in the home. Yeah, are you, uh, you, where do you live in Maryland? Yeah, I live here in Maryland. Where, where, where in Maryland? Gatorburg, you know where Gatorburg? Gaithersburg. Yes, yes, Gatorburg. I got my start in my real estate career many years ago in Gaithersburg, right on Lake Forest Boulevard. Oh, really? Yeah, right next to Lake Forest Mall. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, small world. I live in Virginia now, but anyhow, um, I wanted to get you some information about the, uh, the work from home uh, business project. And it looks like you're looking to, to work a few hours part-time on the side to make some extra money. If I send you over a short video that explains all about our company and what we do and the three different ways that you get paid, can you, can you spend 20 minutes tonight to watch that video? Okay. All right, perfect. Well, I'm going to send it to your Gmail address. Is that where you want me to send it? Yeah. Okay. All right. I got this like BB and a bunch of numbers, right? Yeah, yeah, this is. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll send it over to you. And then as soon as you're done watching it, what, what time can you watch that video, do you think? Uh, no. Now. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So it's, okay. it's, it's about a 20 minute video. So in 20 minutes, I'll look forward to get, just give me a buzz when you're done watching it and we'll talk it through and answer any questions that you have and, and, and take it from there. Okay. All right. My name again is Brian. So Benjamin, I'll, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Can you guys hear that? Okay. All right. That's pretty much it. Now it was, it was a little chaotic. I could tell English was not his first language. Uh, he probably had about, you know, two or three kids who were nipping on his ankles, trying to, you know, pull him into a WWE wrestling match after dinner. I don't know what's going on in the household there, but um, you know, if, if, if there's uh, an entree into more of a conversation, I might take it. I might build a little bit more rapport. I might ask them what they do for a living and uh, what do they like about what they do? What do they not like about what they do? And then I can kind of play, hey, what if you can have more of what you like and less of what you don't like? Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll build a little bit more into it. Um, but sometimes it's just less is more, like just speed, just move on, just get the commitment to watch the video, edify the video. And, and, and what I did there is I said, what time can you watch it? Okay, good. Well, about 20 minutes after that, when you at that time, you'll be done watching it. Just give me a buzz back. Now, if I don't hear back from him at that point, then what, what, what do I do? I, I call him. So let me just go ahead and put this number in here, my app. And if your company does not have a CRM, a CRM app, we can put the contact in and send them info and have them watch the video and get you a notification when they open it and see how much of the video they watched. Let me know because your company needs an app like we've got. And I'll, I'll connect your company with people that we got our app from and away you go. One second here. Boom, that simple. So um, I'm here, I'm, I'm not going to do another live dial because I'm gonna basically treat it the same way. It's just gonna be a different person basically saying the same kind of words. So that's the, that's the, the dialing for dollars thing. Now, if you're part-time, uh, I would say, because you're gonna ask how many leads should I get? Uh, I would get, you can set it up where you get a certain amount coming in a day. So I would say just get like three to five a day. I would say get five a day because you're not going to reach them all. You might only reach out of the five. You might reach one or two live and, and get that conversation to happen. And your goal is what? Two, two exposures a day. So get five leads, reach out to all of them. Hopefully you reach two to get their commitment to join a Zoom or watch a video. And then the other ones, you circle back at a different time the next day to try to catch them when you can catch them. If I don't catch somebody after a couple of tries, I'm going to leave them a voicemail. I'm not going to say anything, but my name and number. If they still don't call me back, then I'm going to call them back another time. And I'm going to leave my best recruiting pitch on their voicemail. <laughs> I, you know, really, you know, I'm not going to explain anything about my company, but I'm going to explain kind of why I got involved in the business. And can you relate to me? You know, you answered this ad for a reason and blah, blah, blah. So you just do what you got, do what you got to do is what I'm saying. So again, instantsuccessleads.net. I would love... Uh, I, I want to know just in the chat, tell me, just say veteran, if you are already a veteran of working recruiting leads, like I'm talking about. If you're a newbie, just say new, you have not worked leads. And if you're new, I would encourage you to go try them. Now, for all of you, whether you're new or veteran, and some of the veterans are probably not doing this, there is an auto ship. Now, auto ship is a term that the network marketing industry has used for many years, which has to do with getting an automatic shipment every month of product as a customer. 
Well, the auto ship with instant success leads is you just say, I want to buy 50 or 80 or 100 or whatever number of leads per month. And they just do it on an automatic monthly basis. You just keep on sending you that many each month. And if you do it, they give you an extra 10% discount off of your order. And there's no contract. So two months from now, three, three months from now, you're like, hey, I'm overloaded. I can't even get to the leads I've already bought. So let me just go ahead and put this on stop for, for now. You can do that. But you want to you get your business as automatic, as machine-like as you can get it. Just like I'm a big fan of the Automatic Millionaire book by David Bach on how to grow your wealth, have money when it comes in, have a portion like 10% or whatever of your income automatically get taken out of your paycheck and put into your wealth building bank account that you're going to invest. Automatic Millionaire. Doesn't that sound good? Well, Automatic Lead Gen. It is really, really important. So I would encourage you guys to do that. Now, let's talk about uh, prospecting on Facebook. Okay. Um, I call it prospecting within your passion. I'm not a big believer in making every post that you put on social media, an advertisement or a recruiting pitch. You're just going to annoy people for every five or 10 posts that you put on social media. One can be business related and out of every business related post, one out of every 10 should be a pitch. The other nine should be stories, 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 product stories, uh, success stories financially. So if 10% of your posting is about business and only 10% is an actual pitch or a call to action, that's, that's in my opinion, that's the magic formula. So just keep that in mind. Also remember that Facebook does not show, if you've got, 800 friends on Facebook, when you post something, 800 people don't see it. Depending on how much you are engaging on Facebook, are you commenting on other people's posts? Are you liking what they're saying? Are you uh, go posting? And then when people comment on your post, are you commenting back on their comments? Are you engaging? The more people you engage with, the more people Facebook is going to show your stuff to. If you're a post and pray, or if you're a post and run, you like you go on Facebook, you post and then you leave and you go back to your day. Facebook looks at you like you're just trying to get, you know, to, you're, you're a taker, not a giver. You're not adding to their platform. So therefore, out of 800 friends, they might show your stuff to 10 of them. So if you want to actually do well on, on Facebook, you need to engage on there. Don't go in there and just scroll. Scroll, but comment, like, share, engage, talk, all that kind of stuff build friendships and engage with people. So prospect within your passion. What are you passionate about? In the chat, tell me what is your favorite hobby? Tell us, what's your favorite hobby? Put it in the chat. I want to see what some of you guys uh, type in there. Traveling, running, horses, movies, fishing, dogs, dancing, reading, self-development, auto, racing, bowling, tennis, drag racing, martial arts, cigars, can you imagine putting all that into one hobby? That'd be pretty crazy. <laughs> so check this out. Whatever you're putting in there, go, go find the many Facebook groups that are dedicated to that passion. Go join those groups and then get in there, post valuable content that people will gain value from in that group. So be a giver. Then also go scroll through the group, go scroll down the page, and look at what people are posting, like it, comment on it, and then comment on other people's comments. Hey, I agree with you. I agree. And also, have you thought of this? Oh, that's a really great insight. Engage in there. Figure out what you can uh, pretend when you walk into a Facebook group, pretend you're walking into a, a family reunion or you're walking into a social or a mixer. You don't just walk in there and like stand in the corner, like afraid, hopefully. You just go in there and just start socializing with people. Make yourself known. Put a smile on your face. When you're typing, type things that, that, make, that are smiley, that are like happy and uplifting and, and, and make people feel good. Prospect with your passion. And then 
tie in how extra income could help with whatever that passion is. So if somebody says they like traveling, but they don't have enough time to travel because of their work hours, or they don't have enough money to travel because they don't have, they can't afford it as much. Well, in the conversations that you start generating, and hopefully you can start generating conversations off the Facebook page into Facebook Messenger, so you can have more conversation versus it being in somebody's thread on a post. Then you start talking about, well, yeah, I just took this trip or I just took that trip. And they might say, well, heck, man, how do you afford that? Well, funny you should ask. I, you know, I started a side business so I can make some extra money for travel money. And now we go on an extra two trips a year or an extra trip a year. Or you might say, hey, my, my company sends us every year on a fabulous destination trip to the islands, down to the Bahamas or to Mexico or whatever. So we, you know, we, we've been doing this uh, side business for the last three years. And uh, the last two years, we won this trip, uh, like a $3,000, $4,000 trip for two that they pay all expenses for. It's so amazing. And we just do it part-time a few hours a week. They might say, well, my gosh, how does that work? Or if they don't even really say that, say, hey, by the way, would you want to check it out? You Maybe you can start coming on these trips with us. So again, prospecting within your passion and also go to some in-person activities. In-person activities. Uh, I've met some really great people playing in some uh, charity golf tournaments here in Virginia. I've also met some amazing people in my hobby of sports cards. I'm really into baseball, football, basketball, hockey cards, heck, Pokemon cards, Star Wars cards. If it's a card with a picture on it and stuff on the back, it's a collectible, I'm in it. Like my son and I, Talon, we love collectibles. So cards. I used to be a card dealer from 85 to 92 when I was in school. And during COVID, everybody got into their hobbies because they had nothing else to do. And a lot of people got back into sports cards. Well, I mean, shit, I've spent, I don't know, $700,000 buying cards in the last three years. So I, I, you know, when I talk to people about cards in Facebook groups that are, that are sports card groups, I can be in there for three hours talking to people about cards and it, and it's not work. It's play. It's fun. I, I love talking about this rookie card and this player and this year and this special autograph card and all that. And I build relationships. And then people start asking, well, where are you getting the money to buy all these cards? Oh, I get the side business. I use my residual income for it. Do you have residual income to help you buy cards? No. Well, hey, let me show you. The, I've recruited a bunch of people that way. So again, um, whatever you like, online or offline, go do it and talk to people passionately about it build the friendships. And then again, rapport, friendship, peak interest, presentation, edify, three-way call, sign them up. Now, here's something else that you guys probably have never thought about. You can tap root, T-A-P-R-O-T, tap root. You can tap root and never run out of leads. Tap root, a tree is larger below ground than it is above ground You, the, the tree has to keep on growing its roots down and wide, down and wide. It just kind of keep on growing down to go out. The bigger the tree gets, the bigger the root system needs to be to hold the tree in place, but also to what? To gather water and nutrients from the soil to feed the tree. So you need to be a tap rooter like a tree. When you, rec when you recruit somebody into this business, tap root through them and their contact list right away, right away. You got how much wave at me, like legit, like physically wave at me right now. If you have people on your team that have already quit, anybody got people that's already quit? Okay. So two things, if they quit, but they haven't legit quit, like they're still in the system, they're just not doing anything. Those people tap root through them. So you can actually contact them. If, if, let's say, let's say that, uh, I see, uh, uh I see Sue in Ontario. So Sue is an inactive person on my team. I haven't even talked to her in a year. I just call Sue up and say, hey, Sue, it's been a long time. How you been? I'm just going to catch up for a second. And I'll say, hey, look, I got a quick question for you. I, I know that you've, uh, you've not been focused on your legal show business for a while now. And I totally get it. Probably got busy and you kind of lost focus and maybe you lost your itch to do it. But um, amazing things are going on in the business right now. And as you would agree, the economy is not treating everybody really well right now either. There's a lot of people out there that need something that they can do to make ends meet. And you know a bunch of those people. Now, I'm not suggesting today, Sue, that you jump back into this and start contacting them right now. What I am saying is um, you have contacts and I have time. 
You don't want to call those people? I do. If you can make me a short list of like three people that you know right now might have some interest in this, they may or may not. But if you can give me their three names and numbers, and also give me a compliment, give me something really nice that you feel about each of those people. I'm going to call them up. I'm going to compliment them. I'm going to tell them you said that nice thing about them. So they're not going to be mad at you. They're going to be very grateful that you said something so great about them. And then I'm going to ask them if they keep their income options open to side project if the money's exciting enough. So Sue says, yeah, I've got this guy, Rick, down in Arizona. I think he'd be really great at this business because he's the kind of guy, he walks into a room and everybody gravitates to him. He's just the funniest guy in the world. I said, great. So I call up Rick. Hey, Rick. Hey, it's Brian Carruthers. We've never met before. So you might say, well, why are you calling me? Well, I was just on the phone earlier today with a good friend of yours, Sue. And we were talking and we this led to that. And, and uh, she actually mentioned your name. And she said that when you walk into any room, people like flock to you and you've got them rolling. Like, like you're just, everybody just thinks you're the funniest guy. You're so personable and, and they just love being around you. And I asked if it would be okay to get your number to call you because our company is expanding right now. People with a personality like yours, even just part-time a few hours a week working on this project with us, are making really good money helping us with this project. Now, I don't know if the, I don't know if, the, if 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 you keep your income options open to side projects, if the money's exciting enough, it, it, would that maybe you? Would you would you be open to take a look? At what would you what we do? See, Sue is not even doing anything, but she I, I didn't ask her for a list of a hundred. I asked her for three. That's, she can see that she can do that. She can give me three names and numbers, and and I made her I made her look good in Rick's eyes. Because I paid Rick a compliment that came from Sue. So instead of Rick calling her up after and say, why are you giving this sales guy my number? How dare you? Instead, he's going to say, hey, this guy called me. I just want to say thank you for saying such a nice thing about me. And if, if Sue gives me three names and I get one of them interested, and let's say he checks out a Zoom or checks out a video and he comes on board, guess what? I'm signing her up under Sue. What did I just do? I tap rooted through Sue. Now, Sue may or may not get excited by that, but she might say, well, oh my gosh, I, I, I couldn't even recruit when I was trying. I didn't even try. You did it for me. And now I got somebody underneath me. Hey, Brian, can you call two more for me? Sure, I'll call two more. And then I'll say, hey, by the way, we got a, a team call on Sunday night. Why don't you jump on there and get, uh, kind of hear all the latest, greatest? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Boom, she's back in the game. Anybody want to clap for me? I'm in the zone right now. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. All right, so that's how you tap root. So um, I've, got, I've, got, I've got some other, th some other things I want to share with you. Um, before that, uh, I've got a commercial break right now. And here's my commercial break, okay? This, this, this Zoom is sponsored by Brian Carruthers. <laughs> so... You guys know I've got a training program called Top Recruiter Secrets. It's my best-selling training program. It's 97 bucks, so it's pretty cheap. That's probably why people buy it. Um, but it's basically an hour plus of this kind of content, but detailed, say this, in this frequent, in this, in this sequence, in this tone. I mean, it's really detailed on, on how to be a top recruiter. Um, so there's a lot of people that might be like, hey, I want to go get that. Instead of paying $97 for that, and then when you're on the website, you might go, oh my, what's this locker room training? What's this $500 training program? Five hour training on, on what? Yeah, I did a five hour training uh, on the everything A to Z on network marketing. It kind of like brings building an empire to life. It was a locker room meant that I was like in the locker room with the team, closed the doors, took off the gloves and I got down to the nitty gritty. Like I was not holding back. People love that training. I, get, I hear it all the time. But instead of paying $97 for Top Recruiter Secrets and $500 for the uh, locker room training, Darnell Self, some of you may not know who Darnell Self is if you're not in my company. Uh, he's actually been on GoPro stage and a and &P and uh, different stages now. Uh, but Darnell has made $18 million in network marketing. Uh, he's one of the best leaders and trainers in the entire industry, bar none. Ask Eric Worre how amazing he is. Uh, but Darnell and I did a Network Marketing Leadership Academy five-hour training on how to be a great leader in network marketing. And then Darnell, at the end, he did an hour himself 
on how to be a master speaker. Would you like to learn? It's almost like a Toastmasters for network marketing. Would you like to learn how to be a great presenter, a great trainer, a great storyteller, a great motivator? You got to learn how to be a great speaker. Now, I'm not near as great as Darnell is. That's why I wanted him to do that training bonus. But anyway, that's six hours for 300 bucks. You don't need to spend $300 on that either. Um, have you ever heard of the Empire Builders Pro app? Anybody got the, my, my app on your phone, Empire Builders Pro? You know why I came up with that, that app? People were using this book, Making My First 10 Million, The Story of Money and Leveraged Income. They're $3 a piece or you can uh, 100 for 100 for 100 bucks. This little paperback booklet, you put your name and information on a sticker in the back here and you hand it out. And a prospect reads this book. It explain, it, it convinces them that they're working for the wrong kind of money. It, well, first of all, it convinces them that they're repelling money instead of attracting money. They're like, wow, revelation. And then they realize there's three kinds of income, linear, leveraged, and residual. And they only have linear and they don't have leverage and residual. So they're not, now they're going, oh my gosh, I got the wrong kind of money coming in. I need to figure out how to get this passive residual income coming in. And then I explained the network marketing model and how it gives them all of that. It gives them leverage. It gives them residuals. And now, and I explained how it's the same thing as a real estate brokerage. And now they're like, oh my gosh, network marketing is not a scam. It's actually a great business model. I actually now understand. And at the end, it says, if you like this business model, get back to the person who gave you this book and they can show you a company that employs this model and they can help you uh, to build this residual income. It's, it's a great tool. This sold over a million copies, by the way. But here's, here's the great thing. And so people have asked me, hey, can I, can I get a PDF so I can email that book to people? I'm like, well, I'm not just going to give somebody a PDF that nobody's ever going to buy the book. It'll just gonna circulate it on its own. So I said, well, I'll build an app. Well, not me. I had somebody <laughs> build the app. And you can send out the digital copy of the book to as many people as you want for 20 bucks a month. You can send out 500 copies for 20 bucks a month. Send out the digital copy. They read it. You get notified that they read it. And you can follow up accordingly and get them information about your opportunity. But then the app became something more. It became a, a place where I can put all kinds of recruiting tools. I, I recorded a video on how, why become an entrepreneur. Another one on the power of part-time business. And another one on the power of uh, uh, the tax advantages of a home-based business. So those three videos are great generic videos coming from a four-time best-selling author explaining to your prospect, your family member or a stranger or whatever, why they need to talk to you about your business. You know what else is in there? A tax savings calculator. It is, again, badass. See, if you've got somebody who's, who's deliberating, do I want to get involved in this business? If they are a W-2 employee and they don't have tax breaks because they don't have the write-offs like we do as business owners, you can actually send them a link from the app. They can put in the fill in the blanks. How much money are they spending on mileage in their car, gas, um, this telephone bill, uh, you know, uh, mortgage, you know, household cleaning, all these different items that we get to write off. They put in all these numbers. They put their tax bracket percentage in the bottom. So 28%, 35%, whatever the tax rate is. Click a button. It'll tell them how much money they would be saving per year if they just started a business with you. The average number, the range is anywhere from $1,800 to $5,000 is what it's going to tell them they'd be saving per year. And then how much does it cost to start your business? $200? Bucks, $500? Bucks, $100? Bucks, whatever your company is, whatever your startup cost is, I guarantee it's way less than what they're going to be saving per year in taxes and tax savings. This app is going to show them in black and white numbers how much they're going to save by joining your business with you. If you're not using the app, why not? Why not? So I say all that, plus the time master's training. Uh, plus there's a whole bunch of trainings, $2,500 in training stuff, plus the app. If you go to empirebuildersvault.com, if somebody can drop that in a chat for me, it's $49 a month, month to month. And you get access to everything, including the $20 a month app. It's included in that for $49 a month. I would encourage you to go get into the vault and try that. Start listening to the, the Network Marketing Leadership Academy. It's going to take you from here to here. Like if you're already a leader, if you want to go to the next level, if you're not developing leaders, you're like, why do I not have any downline leaders? There's stuff you're missing. First, you have to become a leader that people want to join. Then you got to be a, a leader that people want to follow. Then you become a leader that develops other leaders.
So please go get into that. And anybody who's in the vault, every quarter I'm doing a live three hour mastermind boot camp, whatever you want to call it, where I teach and we do a lot of Q and A. So if you've ever said to yourself, man, I just wish I had somebody like Brian in my corner where I could just talk to him and ask questions and, and remove some of my barriers or whatever. That's how you get it. I am your foster mentor. I actually will be able to talk with you, answer your questions, help you through whatever you're dealing with to be able to get you on the other side and off to the races. Um, and those masterminds are free for anybody that's in the vault. They're only available for people that are in the vault. Um, so let's see, what else do I have here? All right, so I got one last thing that I think is super, super valuable here. I, I shared this with my, my team uh, just recently, and I want to share this with all of you. And if you're on my team, you're, you might have already heard it just days ago. You need to hear it again, okay? Um, success loves speed. Network marketing needs momentum. You need momentum in this business, and momentum is based on speed. You're not, gonna, you're not going to get momentum if you're building slow. If you're talking to people here or there and you're not really urgent about your business, not only are you, if you're not urgent, you're not going to attract people into your business, but you're not going to keep people in your business that have already joined. They're going to, they're going to leave. It's the, the whole tortoise or the hare. It's not how fast. It's not a race. It, it, that's not true. It, it's a race. You're not racing against, against, against other competitors. You're racing against inertia. You're racing against gravity. Like gravity is going to try to pull you down, slow you down, pull you to a dead stop. An object in motion stays in motion until acted upon by an opposing force. You've got forces all around. They're going to try to stop you and they're going to try to stop your people. When my wife gave herself to the Lord months ago and got baptized, and I told the world that I also am in that same walk and started doing things with my church. Somebody warned me and said, the devil is going to come after you now. You know, that's what happens. So you, you, everything's going to try to slow down whatever momentum you try to build. You've got to you've got a man up, woman up and just plow through it and just keep your momentum going. So speed, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to keep on prospecting and leading by example. And tell your team, don't listen to me. There's a lot of leaders, listen to me. You're on their bullhorn. Listen, go do this, go do that. No, no, no. You know, you know what you should be doing? If you're saying anything, you should always be saying, watch me, watch me, watch me. And then do what you want them to do. I'd rather watch a leader than to listen to one any day. So please hear what I'm about to say. In the, se the eighth section, uh, section number eight in building an empire. And I don't know if anybody who follows me would be on here and have not read the book already. If there is anybody that's just introduced or you, your leader told you to jump on the Zoom with us tonight and you, you, you've never met me before, you've never heard about this. See, some of you guys pulling out your book right now. Building an Empire. You've got to read the book. It is the only complete manual on how to build a network marketing business. There's a lot of network marketing books. Some are like, here's how you prospect. Some are like, here are some scripts. Some are like, how to overcome rejection. I mean, there's different ones, but none of them is like A to Z, like the whole system, everything, right? So anyway, in section eight, there's something called the scholarship method. Oh, let me say this. If you've read the book, but you haven't had me read it to you, like if I have not sat at the foot of your bed and read until you fell asleep at night, you should try it. Try it. Put your address in the chat. And I, oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not coming to your bedside, but go to audible.com and get the audiobook. It took me three and a half long days in a studio here in Virginia years ago to go record it in my own voice. I didn't want to pay a voice, a, a voice person to go read it for me. It needed to come from the guy who did what's in the book. It had to be my voice. I'm telling you, I wanted to, just, I wanted, <laughs> I don't know what I want to do myself, but uh, it was it was a horrible experience trying to record that thing. In the, in the, it came out great, but I was like, it was killing me. And but anyway, get it on Audible. If you don't have Audible, go to Audible.com. If it's your first book, it'll be free. You they give you a free book when you when you first 
get an account sign up. Go, go get it and listen to it. Let Give me 20 minutes of your ear every day over the next 90 days reading that book. Heck, it's next 30 days. I'm going to transform a lot of things for you. So in that book, uh, it says the scholarship method. Okay. Just recently, for the first time, I actually did a deeper dive on this topic. And I got so many people the other day. They're like, my gosh, you brought that to life for me. So in the book, the scholarship method talks about if somebody uh, is wanting to, jo to join your business, but they don't have the money to do it. What do you do with that person? Do you pay their way in? I've tried that in the past, by the way, especially when I was in a rut. I'm like, shit, I'll just pay their way in. I just need to get some recruits on board. Hopefully it'll, it'll work out and it'll, it'll, it'll wind up pro being profitable. It doesn't normally work. They got no skin in the game. If they're not resourceful enough to find the money to get started, they're probably not going to be resourceful enough to do anything with the business. You know, like with our business, it's typically $99 to get started. And I'm like, look, if, if we can put a man on the moon in 1969, you can find a hundred bucks <laughs> to start a business. That's my favorite quote. I heard that from my old mentor, Dan Stamen. If we can put a man on the moon in 1969, you can do whatever, right? So think about that. In 1969, we sent people to the moon. And people have excuses for the littlest things. So the scholarship method, here's what I, I would say, don't pay for somebody, but here's what you do. You tap root through them right away. So I'm looking at, um, uh, I'm looking at Yvonne. So Yvonne is telling me uh, whether it's a stranger on the phone or whether it's a, a cousin of mine, she's like, hey, this sounds great and everything, everything Brian, but I, I can't get started right now. You know, check back with me in a few weeks. Basically, she's saying, I don't have the money. Some people will tell you they don't have the money. Some people will have a, a different excuse to cover up for the fact they don't have the money. It's embarrassing for somebody to say they don't have a hundred bucks. And we don't want to embarrass them. So what I'll say to Yvonne is I'll say, hey, look, I know you can't get started right now. But you have contacts and I have time and I know how to build this business. Why don't you give me three names and phone numbers of people you think would be really great at this business and give me a compliment to pay to each one of them. I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. I'm going to tap root through this person who said no, or I can't get started right now. I'm going to contact them. And as soon as one of them says, I'm in, sign me up. I'm going to say, Yvonne, I'm going to go ahead and sign this first person up. And out of the commission I get, I'm going to take from that the money to pay for you to get in. Because otherwise that would have been your commission anyway. So I'm going to use the commission and we're going to use that to get you started. So I didn't pay for her. And guess what? She didn't even pay for her. She gave me some leads. I worked them. We got somebody started for her. And basically she just got herself into the business and she saw how it worked. She saw the third party in action. She's probably like, Brian, can you help me call three more? And I'm going to say, sure. Let's do it again. So you tap root through the people who say no or not yet. Also, Another way you can do it, a different way, I might say, well, you know, Yvonne, uh, I know you want to get started, but you don't have the money. Let's say she says, hey, I, I can't afford it until my next paycheck, which is a week from Friday. I said, no problem. Guess what we're going to do? We have a Zoom tomorrow night at eight o'clock where we're going to be presenting this opportunity for 20 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and pretend you got started, even though you haven't gotten started yet. So let's go ahead and make your list. And here's what I want you to say. And you're going to reach out to some neighbors and some friends and a few relatives and people that you know and care, they, they care about you. And, 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 uh, and you're going to reach out and you're going to invite them to that Zoom tomorrow night. Five, 10, whatever, how many, ever many you get on there. We're going to pretend she's in and she's going to invite people on. And then when somebody says, I'm ready to sign up, I'll do the same thing. I'll say, hey, let me scholarship you. I'll go ahead and sign them up on my website, take the, take the money we need to sign you up. And, and everybody else that signs up after that, they're all, your, they're all yours. It's, it's a no-lose scenario. So again, the scholarship method is not about you paying for somebody. It's about you getting them in the business without it costing them any money. They just gave some contacts and you converted those contacts. Did you guys get something from that? Hopefully you guys did. So let me leave you guys with um, one paragraph from the book here. And this one, I want you to really pay attention to. It's a chapter that's called Focus on the Starfish. 
One day, a lady was walking down the beach by the water. She looked down where the waves were washing up, and she saw piles of starfish lying in the sun. She bent down and picked one up and studied it. She noticed that it was starting to dry out and was barely moving. So she threw it back into the ocean. She began to throw them in one after another. A man walked up to her and said, why are you bothering throwing those starfish back in? Look around, there's thousands of them washing up. You can't possibly have an impact and save them all. She looked at him, holding up the starfish in her hand for him to see, and said, while that may be true, I will impact this one's life. And then she proceeded to throw the starfish back into the water. My good friend just reminded me of the story as I was writing these words. He pointed out to me that he has been watching me doing the same thing with respect to my business. What he said almost brought tears to my eyes because it really is how I feel. He repeated the story of the lady and the starfish and said, Brian, you do the same thing with each person that you pour yourself into with your business. Sure, you won't be able to save everyone or change every life, but you can and will change the one in your hand that you're working with. So you're not gonna change everybody. You're not gonna help everybody. You're not gonna recruit everybody. You're not gonna save everybody, but you will change the life of the prospect that you're talking to right now. Believe it. They don't need to believe yet. They just need to believe that you believe that. Selling and recruiting is a transfer of that belief. So I just want to ask you all to believe. Now, as we finish right now, I'm going to go ahead and allow you uh, to toggle and unmute yourself. And as we finish up, I just want you all to say, I believe, I believe. And I'll see you guys on our next Zoom. I believe. 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 <laughs> Good night, you guys. I believe in you all. I believe. I believe. Brian, incredible. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I believe. Good night. I believe. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Hey, Thank I love you. you guys. Thank you for your following. <laughs> Thank you for leaning in. I believe. Good you night, guys. Lord Starfish. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it.